found some nice spots to sit during archery on an east facing slope when you got some west winds bonuses so i'm getting ready to walk back towards the truck and kind of parallel where i came in i found this old path old logging path right here which is great because i can use this to bike in from the car turn up this little hill and then it's a nice flat top of the ridge all the way over to that steep east facing slope uh, where i've got a couple of spots i want to set a stand feet are a bit tired today went to some state land about a half hour from the house it's the second time i've been in here the first time i did five miles today i just did over five nice thing is i think i found four separate spots that i could hunt depending upon coming in here and seeing whether there's pressure or not in the fall Pup and I had a good day. Now it's time to head home, take a shower, sit in the hot tub, have a beer. Well, I'm out this morning doing some more scouting, a little bit different scouting from what I've been doing. Uh, the first time I went out to scout, I went out to a bigger section of property over 500 acres and scouted that area and obviously I know there's going to be a lot of hunters in that area so now I'm going to do my next couple of scouts on some smaller pieces and uh, my dog's running around he just about took out the lab mic <laughs> I'm going to work on some smaller pieces and see if I can find some places that are a little bit more uh, overlooked and uh Obviously, I'm going to try and find, you know, half dozen or so that if I come back in the hunting season and one is just full of hunters, then I can move on to the next. So all this right now is really kind of experimental, uh, but I'm going to get out and try and find some places to hunt that aren't too far from the road. Also today, really paying attention to tick prevention. Um, I know here in upstate New York, the ticks are just absolutely horrible. I've got my dog with me, so dog's got his flea and tick collar on. And then uh, I just got this vet's best um, flea and tick waterless bath, and I made sure to cover him neck and ears and head. He just took out my mic. Okay there, boy. I knew that was gonna. I knew he was gonna tear that mic out, and of course he did right there. But that's all right. So again, I went ahead and took this waterless flea and tick bath, and I made sure to cover the back of his neck and front of his neck and chest and all the way down his back and try to do a good job getting up on his forehead and ears, trying to protect him. Fortunately, he's a yellow lab, so it's easy to see. Um, it's easy to see the ticks on them, but still I want to try to prevent as many from getting on them as possible. Uh, for myself, um, if you take a look, I've got my socks tucked into my pants. I know it looks really strange, but I'm trying to prevent ticks from getting up into uh, my pants themselves. I've got a t-shirt that's tucked down into my pants, long sleeve shirt and a long sleeve jacket. The jacket may come off, but I'll still have my long sleeve t-shirt on. And then up here, I've got a bandana and this bandana has got this flea and tick waterless bath in it as well. Uh, just trying to prevent any ticks that may crawl up the back of my shirt. The other thing that's important about tick prevention is making sure that when you get home, you do a self body check too. I know it's funny, but you know, you got to lift your armpits, you got to look in your groin, um, you really got to check your hair, have somebody else check your hair for you. But it's important to do that self check. Um, one of the funniest things hey, stop, 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 come here, you're in the cord. <laughs> Good boy. Come here, come here, come here. Good boy, relax. One of the most important things is uh, to make sure you check places that the sun don't shine. And I read an article once that suggested that just for you're getting in the shower naked, you should put a mirror on the floor and then squat over that mirror. And it may not be something you wanna check, gentlemen, a little bit funny, a little bit strange, especially if your wife happens to walk in on you. But um, it's definitely worth making sure you check to make sure you don't have ticks. and. They can be about in any crevice you can imagine. Okay, gentlemen, we're off today. We're gonna go do some scouting on some property that's close to road, see if we can find some places uh, that a lot of other hunters miss. Timber.
Ready to go for a hike? Huh? Ready to go? So I was walking across a bench here, maybe just about 100 yards down over the ridge, and I got to this area. It's probably got about eight or ten really mature oaks. And then down below, it's got all this evergreen bedding, and then it drops off over a steep face towards the east here, which would be great for a west wind. Found a nice tree right here. It's just off, about 10 yards off of that bench trail, about 10 yards away from the evergreens. I could go ahead and put my Assault 2 hang on tree stand. Scrape here from last year. It's a definite place I'm gonna come back to in the fall and sit. On this old logging road and a couple of trails across it up above. A couple of real nice rubs up there. Sometimes on private land, this is what you're up against. Someone's already got a tree stand here. I got it set out off season. Well, what are you gonna do about it? It's part of hunting public and finding those areas where there's deer without a ton of pressure. I'm back from my scouting pretty successful although two of us are a little tired I found uh, four or five potential spots to set up stands uh, for archery this fall overall successful day on a smaller piece uh, less than a hundred acres um, no more than a 10 minute walk to any of the tree stands that I'm looking at so we'll see if this pays off in the fall or if there's just too many people here right Timber So the camera's up, we're done for the day. We're gonna head back to the truck. Uh, it was pretty successful to be able to find a place that I really think is gonna be a good place to hunt. A lot of oaks transition between hemlocks and oaks. There's a creek behind me. There's three small bodies of water here. There's plenty of browse, there's some grass. Public land though, you never know whether I'm gonna be sharing this with somebody. That's why I'm going out to find five or six different spots in the summer so that I can bounce around this fall. Okay, we're out of here. Friday afternoon, not at work. Puff and I are out doing some scouting. End of April. deer trail along the edge of these hemlocks and the stream before this steep face and I came across this tree right here I thought oh maybe a buck crop and I looked up above porcupine's been gnawing on this tree I've been having a big old lunch in this tree ready to go home puppers ready okay good boy
Let's get out of here and go home. Right on the edge of this trail that's been working up this point and it continues working up that point but I found an intersection right here too where I've got a trail that's coming across the contours so I think that's a good place that uh, I can go ahead and mark a stand in black that you see there where I've got some trails moving uphill on this point and also some trails that are coming across the contour lines so I didn't even get 20 yards and I found another scrape right here and you can see that this branch is just all tore up. There's a bunch of oaks in here. And I think I'm going to mark this as a place that I could uh, put a stand. Timber. Come here. Come. Heal. Timber. Heal. Really pretty cool. We came up over the top of this point right here. Dog was about 20 yards away from me. And all of a sudden I saw something about 10 yards off to my right. It was just a little coyote. They came running out of that log. Must be their den right here. can't say that's gonna happen every single day. Totally shocked and surprised coming up over a point I was looking at for a possible tree stand. The dog's about 20 yards to my right, and all of a sudden I look and there's something moving about six yards to my left. And I looked at it and it was a coyote pup. And uh, suddenly the hairs on the back of my neck went up a little bit, not because I was scared for me, because I didn't want uh, Timber here and the coyote um, to see each other. So. I got a hold of Timber and brought him over to me real quick and sat down and videotaped for a minute. And next thing I know, I turn around and I look up the hill and there's mom. And uh, she was barking at us something good. And I don't blame her one bit. Those are her babies and she was mad. So um, I went ahead and uh, 
got out of there. She was definitely mad and barking pretty good and uh, we were kind of almost in between so I started slinking away across the hill parallel with the contours away from the pups and uh, she stayed parallel with us about 40 yards above us and uh, just kept barking away and I was trying to film and hold the dog's collar at the same time and uh, got about 60 yards away and finally she started coming back down the hill and I reached into my pocket I dropped my phone <laughs> um, so I grabbed the pup real quick and luckily I was able to follow my tracks back in the leaves and uh, I had set up a stone to sit on and I must have walked past about four oak trees that I thought were it before I found the one I was sitting at and luckily phone red case was half buried under some leaves right there I found it grabbed the pup and we beat feet man we got the hell out of there so it's pretty cool I hope that comes all right out on camera because that's an experience after 51 years in this earth I've never ran across a pup's den so that was pretty awesome man nothing like having that sunset behind me be the end to a perfect day of scouting pup and I had a great experience with a coyote and some pups He's in the back sleeping. We're going to go home, get cleaned up, make sure we do a thorough tick check. And uh, even though I didn't get as much done as I wanted to, uh, we'll get back out there a couple of times and I'll put all these trips together to give you guys a real good idea of what I do using Onyx when I'm out in the field scouting. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the field next time. Bye. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting, hoping you guys enjoyed this first New York State scouting video. Next week or so, I'll be getting a second video out uh, showing the rest of my New York State scouting. It's amazing how quickly the opening archery season's coming up. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you guys have a great evening.